Learn what it takes to charge your Tesla using a generator on the 110 and 240 volt lines by watching me fail. I, I do succeed in the end, so stay tuned. Hey guys, so I am today going to try to use my generator here to charge up my Tesla. Why? Uh, really because I've got to run the gas out of this generator. Uh, I hardly, I really, I've never used it, honestly. I bought it for the house uh, because the power would go out every now and then. And I thought it'd be a good idea to have one just in case the power went out and I really needed it. To run the fridge, uh, heater in the winter, uh, things like that. So, uh, what ends up happening, however, is that I never need it because the power really doesn't go out enough in the house. And I fill this generator up with gas, and like you can see here, uh, noted, last time I filled it was two years ago. And it's just sitting in there, so I have old gas sitting in the generator, so I have to either siphon it out and then do something with the gas, uh, take it to uh, a hazardous site, or I have to run this really noisy generator outside and let it idle, which takes forever for it to run the gas out, or I could maybe run my refrigerator or something like that in the house. I, I, I'm not sure really what I would use it for otherwise, but uh, since I bought this Tesla, I thought the best thing to do would be to charge the car up, charge the Tesla up. So that's what I'm going to do today, see if this works. I've seen other people do it, so let's try it. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is use the 110 volt charger, which is normally what I use at home. The car doesn't get driven enough every day to necessitate a 220 line in the garage, although I am uh, putting one in. And then I am going to try to use this converter here, which is a L1430P, which will fit in this guy here. To, it, it converts this um, L1430P to the N1450R which is what uh, I have the other cord converter in the car that we'll use, but that's what Tesla gives you is the uh, male end of this guy. So uh, we will try that out. Uh, the other thing too is that uh, this is a 7,500 watt startup uh, wattage uh, generator and it, but the running wattage is about 6,000 watts. So that would be, using the art of mathematics, that would give us about 50 amps. But as you can see, it's got a, the main breaker here is 25 amps. So what, what is that? Is it 25 and 25? Am I only getting 25 amps? Uh, this too, protector, 20 amp protector? I, I don't know. I, I don't know exactly. Uh, these are rated at 30 amps each. Uh, this one's 30 amp, uh, 250 volt. So, uh, you know, instead of, uh, you know, doing something smart like reading the manual to see what I'm actually going to get, I am just going to plug it into the car and you can adjust the amperage, the max charging amperage for the car, and I'm going to turn it up and see what happens to the generator see if it still works. Uh, that's assuming that any of this is going to work at all. I know sometimes there are uh, grounding issues uh, using these uh, generators. So uh, let's find out. All right guys, this sucker's loud. I got it running. Uh, let's see what happens. Oh, I'm also gonna show, um, I saw some tips on how to make these generators more quiet. I'm also gonna go through that. But right now, let's uh, see if we can get it charging. Yep. 
inadequate grounding. Alright, let me work on this. I've only got 39% here too, by the way. Alright. To be continued. That's a real bummer. Okay, so grounding issue, try to solve that. How? I've got a, don't ask me how or where this came from, but I've got uh, some car uh, jumper cables with these loop ends on it. I'm going to try to ground that to the 240 line that I am working on. And this is actually grounded, well, through the conduit. The conduit is, is grounded through the, um, the house and that uh, giant grounding rod that they use, uh, the electrical company uses. So I am hoping that this solves the problem. And uh, also, uh, bonus content, uh, to get the uh, generator to be a lot more quiet, and this works a lot better if you're in the grass but what you do is you take a bunch of uh, just old pieces of plywood or something and create these sound deflectors and it's kind of the more plywood you have and the more that you can surround this thing with angled plywood the better uh, I do have more pieces um, in the garage but I didn't want to pull everything out to just for this because it's it's not going to run a, a long time but it does make a big difference uh i had it when i had it in the lawn earlier and i just started putting these pieces of plywood down it made a huge difference actually it uh it, it deadened the sound a lot but i don't think it's going to do quite as well because it's now on the driveway which is a hard surface so instead of the grass absorbing some of the sound uh that would deflect it's probably just going to bounce off the driveway and stuff, but it probably will still make a difference. So anyway, uh, back to the grounding issue. Uh, let's start this thing up and see if it works. That's not a good sign. It was hard to see that before, but now that it's not in the sun, um, I'm pretty sure that was showing red. So I think this is still going to say that it has a grounding issue. And right off the bat, yeah, same thing. Wow. Okay, so the uh, grounding trick I tried didn't work. So it uh, turns out I need to do a ground neutral bond. And uh, I was going to buy a plug that I could manually do that too at the store but then you know I have old electronic junk lying around and just cut off a, a cord so uh, what I need to do then is turn everything back on and determine which one of these is ground and neutral and you know should have the ground here I want to make sure that which one of these is neutral. I'll use the, uh, a voltmeter to determine that once this is running, and then I will um, tie the two together, whichever they may be, and leave this plugged in, and that should fix my grounding issue. Question I have though is, will it fix the grounding issue just for the 120 line or if I leave this plugged in here will it also fix the 120 and the, the 240 over here I don't know but you know find out okay got it running again so uh, let's see what what is uh, ground and neutral
Okay, uh, so I've got the uh, little ground neutral tied together there. Uh, the bonding plug, as I'm going to call it, or as it's called. And we're going to try the uh, 110 line first. Start it up and see what we get. the green on the uh, Tesla. And da da da. All right, looks like we are charging. Oh, get in here and out of the noise. So it is right now going between zero and one kilowatt, 12 amps. All right. All right, well, that's good. As you can see, you know, 18 hours to charge at this rate. But this is about what I get normally uh, this corresponds to anywhere between three and five miles per hour so pretty slow this is set to uh, I believe this is set to 70 or so it's not telling me here it would tell me on the app but I think that's about 70 All right, so now I'm going to try to use the 240 line, which is really what I wanted to do all to begin with. So uh, let's try that. Oh, I meant to unplug this. <clears throat> I meant to unplug the, uh, the car over there, but it doesn't seem to matter. All right, it was climbing up and then it went, I think it went up and down and up and down. It's going down again. I don't know what's going on. Hmm. Wonder if I need to drop the current. Boy, that's odd. It saying zero here. It uh, does have a voltage. It's using something to say that it's going to be five hours, 25 minutes, but it's not actually charging. Or, I, I, I don't believe it is. Let me change that, see what happens. Yeah, and the... Uh, when it was trying to charge before, when, when it saw these numbers climb up and down, uh, I could hear the generator, you know, struggling a little bit with the load on and off, and now it's not at all. Let me bring this way down. the generator died ah. okay all right so I think I ran out of gas actually which is what I wanted to accomplish to begin with uh, all right let me see what's going on okay so let me speed this whole last part up uh, and, and summarize everything the time to to complete charging is based on the amp setting. Um, you, know, you turn the amperage up uh, on the setting and it will turn the time down. 
duh. Okay. Now, I had to restart the whole 240 volt test. For some reason, I stopped the generator, I started it, replugged every, unplugged everything, replugged everything back in, and I could not get the 240 to charge after it stopped the last time. I don't know if it, it, it tripped the surge protector or the fuse. Inside, outside, there's fuse buttons. They weren't popped out. There was nothing to reset there. So I actually went back and plugged back into the 120 volt line on the generator and got that running. Then plugged everything back into the 240 volt line and everything started working got charging back up. From that point, then I thought I was going to be able to set the uh, Tesla to charge closer to 20 amps. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get that high. At first, I think I hit about 13, 14, maybe 15 amps, and the generator stopped charging, turned the amperage back down to 12, and then slowly built up, as you can see, to I think I got up to about 16 setting on 16 I would get about 17 amps and then my generator ran out of gas again so uh, I don't know if I would have been able to get up to 20 if if I can get up to 20 I've got to ramp up very slowly which is a little painful but you know it's not like I'm going to be using this generator all the time to be charging I'm just going to be using it um, for running the gas out of it you know it's meant to be a backup generator for the house not to be charging the Tesla but it's nice to know now that I have that just in case I mean let's say the power goes out in the entire house and I my car is not charged for whatever reason I now I can use this to charge the car and to run the house so there you have it thanks guys and uh, please like and subscribe